Good morning and welcome to today's tutorial. Today we're going to speak about uh, PLC counters and timers, especially for the uh, Sematic S7300 family. Uh, that's a PLC made by Siemens and it's a specific one, meaning other PLCs could have other timers, uh, other counters and uh, using other data types and so on. Uh, that could be possible. Some of those could have more functions, uh, but all of those timers and counters that I'm going to show to you today are actually IEC standard counters, uh, which is an international standard. Huh, who would have guessed by the name? So, uh, I usually start with uh, an introduction to the Mechatronic system. This has been done in the previous video, so I'm not going to do this again. Uh, and it's already uh, actually half past 12 in the morning so I'm gonna make it quick and I still want to play this little thing that came off half an hour ago so let's make this a quick one good so uh, from last time we had that this is the system behavior that we want the thing that we did not talk about yet uh, after talking about the step uh, definition step execution is this step 4 here uh, how do we get into step 4 and how is step 3 executed? Step 3 says turn on screw motor M1 for 3 seconds and there is no transition between 3 and 4, no step definition. After this has happened, those 3 seconds are run out, the close clamp should release. So let's have a look. Uh, 3 seconds. 3 seconds that could indicate a timer. Uh, timers I have to do everything with timing and we need a three second timer so we need to turn on the screw motor for three seconds if this input turns on and we come from step two so basically we have the definition for step three already we know when we are in step three only thing we have to do now is to turn on the motor as long as we are in step three which should last three seconds so let's have a look <coughs> I need this and I need this and boop. So, step three, I said, right? Uh, let's go to the step uh, definition first. So, uh, here, I already prepared something. If I'm in step three, right? If I am in step three and something happens, then go to step four, right? If I'm in step three and something happens, uh, no transition given here, go to step 4. So we need to create the timer first. The timer we have to create in step 3 in the step execution. So we have to go there first, step execution. Ah, here, screw motor on 3 seconds. Let's have a look, screw motor on. Ah, I already prepared those, those are not naturally given. Would actually look like this, and then it would be an error. Uh, so those are not given. I drag and drop an empty block here again. What do we need? If I'm in step 3 and automatic mode is active, I want to start a timer. If we have this question block that I have, uh, that's quite a lot. Oh, that's a lot. All those that are marked blue here are special functions. They're, those are pre-given functions. They have input parameters and output parameters. So uh, we want a function that is pre-given. We want input parameter this, step 3 and automatic mode, and output parameter turn on motor for 3 seconds. Hmm, that's doable. Uh, but that we wouldn't probably find it well I would but let's find another way ah on the right here yeah. I've got my instructions window and I've got basic instructions I've got counter operations I've got time operations so IEC timers IEC is the international standard we're using standard timers and some semantic timers those are Siemens specific and not blue if they are not blue they do not have a data block with them. They, we would have to create some other data. We do not want that. So we need to take those blue ones, which have input parameters and output parameters and a given behavior. That's why they, uh, those things are blue. <coughs> uh, function block. Those are basically function blocks, pre-given function blocks. We have three different types of timers here. A TP, which is a pulse timer. It generates rates of pulse. Uh, if we turn something on, it doesn't matter how long. We turn it on, boop. when turning it on, this timer starts and goes for, uh, turns on the output for as long as we say. So could, if step three and automatic mode, boop, turn on the motor for three seconds. Ah, that's good. 
we, that, that's something we could use. Uh, T on is an on delay timer, meaning if we turn something on, the output should turn on after a certain amount of time, for example, three seconds. Uh, I turn on the input, step three, step three, boop, one, two, three, motor on. And if we are out of step three, motor turns off immediately. That's not exactly, this is called in German an Einschaltverzögerung, meaning an on delay. The turning on, this is on, 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 ah, uh, the delay is too long, right? We do not want a delay when turning on and boop, they turn off at the same time. That's not the right thing we want to have. T off, off delay timer. If we turn on the input, the output turns on immediately, right? If we turn off the input now, the output is still on. One, two, three. Mm. That's also not exactly what we want, right? Uh, let's have a look again. T off, both on at the same time, input off. Mm. Mm. After a certain time, the output goes off as well. Uh, TP looks like this. If we turn on the input, boop, the output turns on as well. And one, two, three, output turns off. Input is still on, but the output is off already. Ah, oh, that's good. So enter step three. One, two, three, output off. Perfect. That's what we well, that's what we want. That's what we need. How can we find this behavior if we are not sure about it? Uh, here, there's the help function. Noise. If you hover about something, there's TP, general files, or the help functions, you could also hit F1. I'm just clicking on this now. And this one explains it with text, a lot of text, 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 text. Ah, down here, a timing diagram. This timing diagram is actually rather useful. Uh, can I zoom in? Yes. So the following figure shows the pulse diagram of the generate pulse instruction. So we have the input here. Input, if the input goes high here on the rising edge, the output Q also goes high. Output goes high. PT is the time that we put at the input. PT is the time that we put at three seconds. So one, two, three. You can see down here, this is what the timer does. One, two, three. Then it's at the limit. And as soon as it leaves, uh, reaches the limit, the, uh, the output goes off. There we go. Off. Boop. And it doesn't matter how long we keep the input on, the output is only on for the specified amount of time. Perfect. That's exactly what we need for our application. Turn on the motor three seconds on when entering step three. Let's have a look at the on delay. You see, similar here, uh, on the input side, if I turn the input on, the output is still zero. It stays zero, zero, zero after the specified time is over. So one, two, three, ah, output turns on, it turns on, or it stays on, stays on until the input turns off, off. Then it turns off immediately as well. Off delay, meaning the turning. Uh, the on delay, meaning the turning on is delayed, and an off delay. Let's have a look. Uh -huh. The in, uh, the on behavior is not delayed. You can see this. If I turn the input on, the output goes also on. If I turn the input off, the output stays on for the time that we programmed. Three seconds. So I press a button. Whoop, on. I release the button, and this output still stays on for blah, 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 three seconds, for example. Good. Those are the three options we have. We already said uh, pulse timer would be good. So I will drag and drop this pulse timer here, and you will see a window it's going to open. We, the program is automatically going to generate a data block, a system data block for this uh, timer. We just need to give it a name. So I will give it the name timer motor on. I'm writing those uh, underscores because sometimes those programs do not like to have blanks. So now I put the timer in here. It uses a data type time, automatically pre-generated, nothing we have to do uh, there. That's why the data block is created. We don't need to care. For details, I could hit F1. I won't do that right now. It's too late in the morning. Too late in the morning, too late in the night. It's too late. <clears throat> so the in is the input. So whenever this turns on, whenever this turns active, the output is going to stay active for the uh, PT, which is the time we want to set. This input is, if we just type in a number, 3000 for example, it's a millisecond, 3000 milliseconds. So three seconds, we wanted three seconds. I could also write 3s, three seconds. So uh, 
uh, my output is now, if I'm in step 3 and automatic mode is active, then this timer is going to turn on this Q output. This Q output for 3 seconds. I can use this Q output now. I save the program. Uh, by the way, here on the left, in program blocks, system blocks, program resources, the timer data block was created automatically. Can have a look in there. Ah, uh, some data, some data, we don't care. <clears throat> so, now I can use this Q. This output I can use. Uh, this was now in the step execution. And I can go to the output assignment where we will need it. So, my screw motor should be on, right? This output, Q5.2, is my screw motor, should be on. On, I can here select, uh, where is my uh, timer motor on? Perfect, that's my timer. And I want the Q, right? Q was the output. So, my motor is now on as long as the timer runs. Perfect. I only need this timer, the turning off of this timer, right? The turning off of this timer uh, needs to trigger the next step, turn on the next step. So, I need to go to step definition and I want to go into step 4, right? I want to go into step 4 when I'm coming from step 3. And my timer has run out. So, and my pulse timer that we just generated and the motor basically turns off. So, let's have a look if we find... Uh, so, uh, there is something called in the bit logics here. Something called... Uh, 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 let's have a look. Ah! We want the turning off, right? It was on and now it's off. Hmm, perfect. So, just a slow. So, it comes from 1, comes from 1, comes from 1 and goes to 0. This. The slope. That's, this is called a negative edge, a falling edge. The opposite, we come from a 0, 0, 0, we go to a 1. This is called a positive edge. We want to see this. We want to exactly see a uh, motor was on, motor was on, or timer's on, timer's on, timer's on, bloop, timer's off. Then we want to go to the next step. This is called a positive edge or a rising edge. Depends on where you are. Steigende Flanke in German. So, let's have a look. We're coming from step 3. Uh, and I want a falling edge, right? My motor goes from 1 to 0, my uh, timer goes from 1 to 0, called N. Right? N is a falling edge. We have two different ones. We have N just and N trig. N trig just takes everything that is here in before and looks at this. If this here is going from 0 to 1, uh, from 1 to 0, then send out the one, only for one cycle, so only for a very, very short amount of time. And down here, we need to, so this N trick looks at the left side. On the other side, we have an N, just an N. This one looks on the top and on the bottom, right, on the top and on the bottom. And if, uh, well, it looks on the top, basically, it looks on the top, not on the left. So it looks on the top. If whatever is written here on the top goes from a one to a zero, it sends all the one. So we wanted, uh, there was some, ah, we want our timer. If our timer goes from one to zero, timer, right? Negative edge, meaning from one to zero, then move a step four into current steps. And down here, we need something strange. We need a bit. We need a bit because what's happening inside is basically, we're uh, a little bit complex. Uh, we are looking at, what is the current step? What is the current step of my motor? Is it, if the current step of my motor is a zero, right? If the current step is of my motor is a zero, right? The current status. And on the other side, this one here is the status from the last cycle. So if, if it was a one in the last cycle and now it is a zero, send out a one. If it was a one and now it's a one, do nothing. If it was a zero and is a zero, do nothing. If it was a zero and is now a one, do nothing. Only if it was a one and is a zero now, send out a one. We need a Merker, a memory bit here. Uh, for example, m50.0, just the memory bit, where the step, the last status of this, not the current status, the status from the last cycle is stored. So this is, I'm going to call that edge memory. Flankenmerker. Oh, I already have one in the program, so it says edge memory one because the name is already given. So I'm gonna save this. <clears throat> so now uh, here my timer turns on when it's step three and automatically for three seconds the motor turns on. So as soon as the motor turns off, 
or the timer for the motor actually turns off, move to step four. And as long as we are in step, as long as the timer is on, turn on the output. I could also here say in step three, turn on the output, but that wouldn't make much difference. So perfect. Now that much for timers and actually generating pulses, edge trigger and positive negative edges. Uh, yeah, the opposite of a negative edge that we had here, negative edge would just be positive edge going from a zero to a one. It does, uh, you always have to put the, whatever you want to check on the top here, not on the bottom. On the bottom, there's the memory bit. Good. Could use this or you could use those, right? Doesn't matter. In this case, it matters because that's an N and that's a P. You can always double click and oh, that should be an N. Now those are pretty much the same. But this looks at the input and this one here looks at the input. So M54.1. Uh, and this one here looks on the top. Very important when working with those. Never, very important, very important here, look at me, very important. Uh, never ever use the same bit here, the same memory bit twice. So if, for example, in the next step, I would also use a negative edge. That's just an example. If I would use a negative edge as well, uh, and I would look on this, it doesn't make much sense, uh, and I would do this, wouldn't work. Because this one is looking at this and it is overwriting it. And now this one is overwriting this as well. So you would need uh, another memory bit, for example, this one. Never ever use the same bit twice. Good. There we go. Save the project. Perfect. So next thing in the video, next thing in the schedule is here, counters. All right, counter. Uh, what I want to do is uh, when my whole machine, when the whole machine here, when the whole machine, so when step eight is being executed or yeah, when step eight is executed, I want to count up a counter by one because we have produced one more piece. I want to just keep track of how many pieces, how often this actually happened, how often this program uh, went through completely. So let's have a look. I want to, uh, as soon as I'm in step eight, right? In step eight, I already have that in my step execution. I want to see, ah, good, good network titles. I know exactly what's going on here. In step eight, I want to also put a counter here on the right. I want to put a counter and I want to count up, right? I want to count up whenever there's a new piece, count up, count up, step eight, count up, step eight, count up, step eight, count up. Always when you enter step eight. Not as long as you're in step eight, but when you enter. So I will just take this, create another so eight, uh, count produced pieces. Right? Count produced pieces, oh, that's good. So I will just take this. If we're in step eight, I don't care if it's an automatic mode or manual, right? I don't care. Uh, I want to count up. Ah, here on the right, counter operations, counter operations. Uh, CTU, CTD, CTUD, count up, count down, and count up down. Those are IEC counters as well, so standardized counters. Uh, and here, those are the semantic counters again that we would have to define. We want to use IEC counters because they are easy to use in this case, and every PLC programmer knows how to use them. So we want to count up, right? I said we produce keys, uh, we want to count up, we do not want to count down. They work exactly the same, and we do not want to count up and down. Count up and down is just a combination of those two. So we're not going to focus on those two, but be aware that you can count down, you can count up, uh, and you can count up and down with the same. <clears throat> uh, if you want to understand those more, <laughs> guess what you can do? Ah, help function, help function, and uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay. You would have to read. That takes like five minutes. You can do that. Reading five minutes? Good. Getting, you're becoming engineers or you're already engineers. So reading should be no problem. So I'm going to check up and up, uh, up, down and down. And here we go, CTU. I'm just going to drag and drop this in here. Uh, count produced. There we go. 
you see it does not like blanks pieces so <clears throat> so whenever we enter step 8 so whenever we enter step 8 we want to count up this one uh, already has this one in so this is a positive trigger right a positive trigger when we as soon as we enter step one we want to count once this indicates only do it once but this already the function that's a function block it already has this in there so we do not have to create this we are not counting permanently up if we're in step one uh, in step eight it just happens once so the count up uh, and that's basically everything we would need here the only thing we need more is a pv process value uh, as soon as this pv it's just an integer number is reached the output of this counter is going high so for example if i want to see uh, did i already produce 10 pieces today 10 pieces pop then this output would turn one if my counter reaches a 10 internally right that's it i could use this q output uh, that goes to one if the pieces are more than 10 or it is zero if the pieces are less than 10. Uh, actually, it is one if it's more or equal, or, and it is zero if it is less than 10. Uh, wherever I want. The same way I used the, uh, let's go here, here, the timer motor on from Q, so the output of my timer motor on timer. So I could use that wherever. <clears throat> so perfect r means reset at the end of the day maybe i want to reset this i could just put an input here uh, for example this could be a push button push button reset i do not have it in my project that why uh, i can leave that open i actually can leave that open because it's not red everything that is red i have to do everything that is not red i do not have to do and you can see this automatically created a count produce pieces data uh, block on its own so we do not need to take care of that uh, good now this is keeping track of my produced pieces i can save the project i can click on R. that's it actually already there's not much uh, more you need to know about those if you need to know more you can always hit F1, you can always ask me, you can always leave a comment. Please leave comments. If you have any questions, you can leave a comment. Uh, I would actually appreciate that. Uh, very good. Uh, very much. Not very good. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Uh, have a good night and hope to hear from you. <laughs>